Recently, news came that Prince may have been addicted to prescription opioids, which may have resulted in his untimely death. We want to talk a little bit more about this and administering pain medication once it's prescribed. Joining us today is Dr. Dane Pullman. He's with Pain Specialist of Austin. Good morning, doctor. Thanks morning. for joining us. Um, the, the other thing besides Prince, and we had this in the news break earlier this week here in Texas, is that fentanyl is also another op opioid, and we've had a couple of overdoses here so we're, we're seeing more of pain management self pain management kind of break it down for me what it is and what sort of drugs we're looking at well i think that th these medicines we've been using for for many years um, for cancer pain and um, acute pain after surgeries and injuries and su such um, but for chronic pain management uh, it's also been used over the last however many years and i think the we're starting to use it to realize that these things can you have to be very careful with these medicines and um, I believe with the fentanyl, the recent um, incidents of fentanyl deaths around the country, we're unsure what if this is coming from. Most right, likely, we're, we're not, the source. Exactly, of the drug it's is. most likely not coming from physicians. I think it's most likely coming from um, maybe outside of the country and, and that sort of thing. Right, so and that's legal. something that uh, investigators are still trying to figure out. Just getting the word sure. about pain medication. Uh, you tell us that there are alternatives using stem cell treatments instead of perhaps prescription drugs. How does that work? What is it? Well, I think that the, the important thing is realizing there are other options and, and you know, people are in pain, people have injuries um, and degenerative, degenerative changes like arthritis and things like that. And so um, interventional pain management is a field where we try to find not only using medicines, a variety of different medicines, but also interventional techniques to try to take away pain and um, help suffering in patients. So stem cells are something that they've been using in Europe for many years, uh, usually around uh, perioperatively in surgeries, um, orthopedic surgeries. Um, recently we started using these in, in, for, for different sources of pain, whether it be an acute injury or even chronic degenerative changes. And so basically it's a um, fairly easy procedure to for, perform. Um, we draw off some cells off the back of your hip and we spin these down and then um, we're able to kind of condense mesenchymal stem cells and then inject them at the area of acute injury or degenerative changes. So this can help with pain. It can also help with um, possibly curing the area, um, expediting healing, um, and then also help with function for patients. So hopefully you avoid having to have someone on a, on a medicine to help with their suffering and maintain their and quality of life. And for a prolonged period of time because that pain yeah. may not ever go away and perhaps it can, you know, shoulder pain is something that I think is very common, make it worse over time. So we... Uh, patients become dependent on these pain medications for relief. Absolutely. So the key is if you're going to be on these medicines, I think it's important it's, it's for an acute period of time and then we kind of try to find another way to, to fix the issue, whether it's with uh, comprehensive physical, med physical uh, therapy, um, a home exercise program, and then a variety of different procedures, you know, leading to surgery. And so the, the point of the, the stem cell option is that potentially in some of these patients you might be able to avoid surgical intervention uh, in the future. Um, and, and, the hospital visits and all the rehab associated with the surgery. So, You talk about this therapy already being used in, in Europe. How far, how long will it be until we see this in the U.S.? Yeah. Oh, we're doing it now. We're actively doing it. Um, but in, in, a, in, a, in a small scale, not as, not as actively as it is in Europe? Um, I think that they just have been doing it a little bit longer in okay. Europe, um, but I know a lot of the, the surgeons in town are using this, um, you know, for healing, to promote healing following their surgeries. A lot of the orthopedic guys in town are doing that. Um, and as far as interventional pain is concerned, uh, it's more, a little bit more cutting edge, a little bit more relatively new, um, but very exciting. And, you know, we've had a few patients that have done pretty well so far from this procedure. And, um, you know, when someone says they've been able to decrease their opioid medicines following the procedure, you know, and... Uh, that's very exciting for me. So. Yeah, right, and, and a positive change, as, as always. It's, it's amazing what research and how yeah. far we can come in yeah, pain absolutely. management. Thank you so much for joining You're us, welcome. Dr. Pullman, and we'll be right back.